All right. Well, let us get started. First off, congratulations on your acceptance to UMass Amherst. My name is Rachel Mason. I am the Associate Director of First Year Recruitment here at UMass. I am also an unapologetically enthusiastic UMass Amherst alumni. I am so happy to, to welcome you, uh, especially in this amazingly competitive year. Every year, UMass gets a little more competitive, and this year was no exception. So truly, take a moment and a deep breath uh, to really appreciate where you are today, uh, and congratulations on that acceptance for yourself and your family as well. So today's agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about um, ourselves and then jump right into um, talking about a day in the life of what it's like to be a UMass student. Uh, we are so glad to have this virtual platform that gives us the opportunity to share with you a little bit about what it's like to be here uh, and to tie it in so that you can imagine as you are making this oh so important decision uh, in regards to where you will ultimately commit and enroll for the fall. We want you to be sure to have uh, an opportunity to ask and have your questions answered as you weigh uh, your options moving forward. So we will provide you with information about how to stay connected with us, how to communicate, because I assure you, myself and my colleagues, we really are here to give you all the information possible. So welcome, hello, you are part of our, our group. We're so excited to, to have you here. Um, we have many student participants who are, are part of this group today. And actually, if you all wanna turn on your cameras just for a moment and wave to say hello, uh, we have Jen, Jen, you wanna say hi, and Julia. Zoe's there, Silas yep. as well, I believe is there in the background. Mary, all current students who are going to be part of our panelists uh, and are answering your questions in the Q&A live as we, we go forward. Jen, Julia, Zoe, and Mary, do you want to take a minute to introduce yourselves um, and Silas as well, just perhaps uh, what you're studying, where you're from. Jen, you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Hi, everybody. My name is Jen. I'm a senior student at UMass. Um, I study nursing and a little bit about what I do on campus um, that I'm involved with besides being a tour guide, which is why we're here today, um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit more of a day in a life of a prospective or future student. Um, so I do course tour guiding. I'm also involved in a few nursing organizations and clubs. Um, and then also I like to ski. So I'm on the ski and board club. Um, and I play some intramural sports on the side and do some research. Um, but I'm from Wilbraham, Massachusetts. So I'm pretty close to here about 45, 50 minutes away. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about myself. I'll pass it on to Julia. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Julia. I'm a senior biomedical engineering major from Stowe, Massachusetts. Very small town, about two stoplights in my town. So coming to UMass was definitely a big shift. If you have any questions coming from a small town or a small high school, I can definitely answer those later. Besides being a tour guide um, on campus, I do some things outside of school. I'm an undergraduate researcher. So I work in a bone cancer lab. And then I also had an internship last summer with the pharmaceutical company. And now we'll be having a um, job upon graduation with them. I'm also in some clubs on campus. I'm in Society of Women Engineers, and Habitat for Humanity. And I'm also involved in engineering peer mentors where we help freshman engineering majors kind of like get acclimated to the school and just give them some advice about being a student here. But for, with that, I'll pass it to Zoe. Hey everyone, my name is Zoe. I am a senior at UMass. I'm an out-of-state student. I'm from a town called Hopewell in New York. I'm a mathematics major. I have a double minor in education and political science. I also will be attending graduate school here starting next year. So I'm very excited to get another year here at UMass Amherst. So my other campus involvement, so obviously I'm a campus tour guide. Besides that, I am involved in the UMass marching band. Um, our marching band here is the largest collegiate marching band in the Northeast. It has over 400 members. So if you do come to our school, you will definitely see and hear our marching band everywhere. I'm involved in the Hoop and Ice Band. That's the band that gets to play at all of the basketball and hockey games on campus. And I also get to travel with those teams as well. So like this weekend, I'm traveling to Delaware for the Women's Atlantic 10 tournament. And I'm really excited to play, um, not play basketball, but play my saxophone at that game. 
Um, and I am also a TA, I TA a calculus class here on campus. So that means I'm a teaching assistant for a professor and I host my own office hours, study sessions, stuff like that. And I also tutor calculus, pre-calculus and statistics at a local high school. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I will pass it off to Mary. Hi guys, my name is Mary. I'm also from a really small town in Massachusetts called Mattapoisett. We have one stoplight and one Dunkin' Donuts, so it's pretty small as well. I'm happy to answer any questions. Coming to UMass has been awesome because it's kind of like a huge city of just students and there's so many different ways that you can find your groups of people. So I'm a biochemistry and molecular biology and a business major. I am in the Commonwealth Honors College and outside of being a tour guide, I am involved in a lot of clubs and extracurricular activities. I'm part of the women's club lacrosse team. I love playing intramural sports. I'm in the women in business club, the genetics club, and I do best buddies. And congratulations to you all for getting into UMass. And I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have today. I'm gonna pass and, it on to uh, Silas. Thank you, Mary. Uh, just to round out the student introductions. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Silas. Uh, I'm a freshman political science major from Topfield, Massachusetts, uh, which is on the North Shore, if you're not familiar with the area. Um, just a little bit about what I'm involved with on campus. Uh, I'm a member of CREW, which is one of our Christian organizations on campus. Uh, I also host a radio show every Tuesday morning from 9 to 11 with our radio station. Uh, and I'm a member of our Outings Club, which does trips to hiking, uh, boarding, uh, rafting trips sometimes. So super great group with that. Um, I also like to stay active in other ways. So I'm a member of the club tennis team on campus, uh, as well as a few intramural sports here and there. So it's a little bit about me and I'll pass it back off to Rachel. Thank you so much. I am so impressed and humbled by the amount of things that you all are involved in. And Mary, I think from now on, I'm always going to refer to the size of a town or city by the number of Dunkin' Donuts that are, are, are there. So that, that's fantastic. Uh, well, thank you so much. And again, your questions and answers and the, uh, and the panel will be answered by these, these students after I do a little bit more uh, introduction of UMass Amherst itself. So let's talk about UMass Amherst. First off, you have been accepted to one of the top 26 public universities in the United States. And this is a reflection not only of our academic program that we offer for our students, but also the amazing uh, life experience, student experience that students are able to find here uh, in the Connecticut River Valley. And we are so excited to offer you this opportunity. We are located in Amherst, uh, which is often voted as one of the best college towns in the United States. I'm not sure who said it, but I will not argue with it. Uh, it's a really amazing place to live, about two hours from Boston, about three hours from New York City, very um, easily accessible, an amazing agricultural area with lots of great hiking and biking opportunities for our students. But I also like to point out that when we are in session, our population density is second only to Manhattan. So we really are our own little uh, city here in this amazing area. At UMass Amherst, you're gonna have the opportunity to select from more than 100 undergraduate degree programs. Yes, you have been admitted and accepted to a specific program. Perhaps you are also part of our exploratory or undecided, but I will tell you many students come to UMass Amherst and not only are they able to really delve into what interests them, but also to discover new interests and to make those changes. And that's what UMass really offers you, that opportunity to delve into your interests, but also discover perhaps some new ones as well. We have an amazing amount of advisors and faculty that will work with you and support you through that process. There's lots of ways we could distinguish ourselves. Certainly, uh, we are one of the leaders in terms of an LGBTQ friendly campus. The Stonewall Center, founded in 1985, was one of the first of its kind on any college or university campus in the United States. There is always something going on at UMass. <laughs> Certainly, you'll find your people, your community, and part of that process will be through connecting with one of our more than 300 student organizations, whether that be an intramural club, student government, outdoor experiences, uh, right on down to our lettuce eating club. If you want more information on that, I'm sure the tour guides would be happy to provide you some information. And I would certainly be remiss if I didn't touch on 
the fact that we are number one campus dining according to the Princeton Review for the last six years running. So this was no fluke. Um, and I'd like to really highlight this not only because, well, it's good food and we all eat every day. So that's important. But it really is a reflection of our commitment, not only to our students' health and well being, but also our commitment to our community and our environment. Interesting to note. UMass Amherst is actually the number one agricultural program in the United States. So we we're able to grow much of our food on campus. If not, we we're able to source it locally through our local uh, farmers and providers. We make a lot of our own food from scratch. Again, this is not only because we like good food, but because we're committed to our students' health and well-being, as well as the well-being of our environment and our community, a reflection of UMass Amherst putting its thoughts and ideals into action. So let's talk a little bit about our students. There is so much that I can say about our student body. So let's just do some of the numbers here. I'm in admissions. I can't get away from the numbers, so sorry. Uh, about a third of our students identify as individuals of color. Also, nearly 25% of our students are first in their family to attend a college or university, first gen. These are great numbers to put on a screen, but really the importance is that not only are we admitting students, but we are dedicated to supporting them through and to graduation. UMass was actually recently um, awarded a, a Gen Forward a recognition, which is a recognition of all the work that we do with our first generation students. We are a research institution. We like to put into practice things that not only feel good, but we know that work. And so, for example, with our first generation students, we have a wonderful mentorship program that connects students with faculty or staff who are themselves first generation. So again, really putting into actions our good intentions. More than 23% of our students are Pell Grant recipients. If you have any questions about financial aid, I encourage you to contact our financial aid office. They're not just an email or a voicemail. They are individuals who are happy to reach out and talk to you and answer any questions you have. So if you didn't know, UMass Amherst is a little big. About 23,000 undergraduate students. Actually, can I talk a little bit more about that? There you go. <laughs> and our students are coming to us from not only Massachusetts and across the country, but around the world as well. Um, typically, we have about 48 states that are represented here on, on campus. Uh, so this is definitely a place that you can come and really uh, interact and experience other perspectives, involve yourself in conversation and dialogue and activity. That's such an important piece of the UMass experience. So that was my little piece of regards to who we are and overview UMass Amherst. I will now happily turn over the presentation to our tour guides. Okay, so um, this is gonna be living at UMass on this slide. Um, so I think um, Zoe's gonna take this one over and then we'll continue with the rest of our slide. All right, yeah, so welcome everybody to what it's like to live on campus at a student. And so let's take a look today at our residential hall. Um, so here you can see in our pictures that we have, um, we'll just point out a couple different things. So um, we have three of our residential communities that are pictured there. So here at UMass, we have five different residential communities or residential areas for students to choose from. Um, Northeast is pictured on the left and then on the top right is our Southwest residential area. And then on the bottom right is our North apartments area. Um, and so let's take a look at our residential hall here. We have a little video to show you guys. So here is our dorm room. Um, so I always like to say whenever I'm looking at a dorm room, anything that's in wood is something that comes with the dorm. So you can see the desk, the dresser, the um, little like drawers that you can see there, the bed frame. Mattress is not made out of wood, I promise, but it does come with the room. Um, anything else that you see is stuff that you can decorate with. You can get really creative with your room, so you can add a ton of different decorations, really make it your own. Um, even, you know, talk to your roommate like I did over the summer um, about different, you know, ways you want to maybe decorate your room. You can bunk your beds, you can loft them. Some people like to loft them and put their desks underneath. Um, I was an RA last year in North 
Northeast residential area, and I saw a lot of students do some really, really creative stuff. Um, so in addition to living in your dorm, there's a couple of different programs that we have for students called RAPS, Residential Academic Programs. These are programs where students are in the living learning community, so everybody on the floor is taking a class together. And so because of this, it creates a really nice community. Um, I was in a RAP class my freshman year. I made a ton of friends there. We're all still friends to this day. We're going on our spring break trip together. Um, so we all met in this class, and because we were living on the same floor, we were studying together, doing homework together, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, and of course going to class together. So I, I cannot recommend those enough. Um, we have those in all of our different residential areas. So um, if you do choose a RAP program, you will live in kind of whatever hall that class is placed under. Um, and then in addition to RAP programs are one way to build community, and there are a lot of people on your floor that are there to help you build community. Those are your RAs and PMs. So RA is a residential assistant, and PM is a peer mentor. And so these are students who live on the floor with uh, students, these you will have an RA all throughout your four years, and then your peer mentor will be just specifically for your freshman year. And I like to consider these like older siblings to you. They're there to help guide you throughout your four years, help you connect with other residents. Um, we host floor events for students to get to know each other, help with roommate conflicts, do security rounds in the hall. Um, really just a place for students to go. Um, you should never be wondering in your dorm who can, you can reach out to. There's always somebody living on your floor who knows the answer who or who can contact somebody um, who does know, um, know the answer to that. Um, and this is all part of the um, residential first year experience, so RFYE, to help make a smooth transition into college living. Um, this program starts in your freshman year, but throughout all four years, students will have a good base um, within their dorms to succeed here academically. Um, and uh, one other thing I'll talk about is for our residential directors. These are the um, kind of like uh, like live-in staff who help create that environment to support students within the dorm. So these are people who are available for you to talk to um, whenever you need kind of more of a higher level. They help advise the student council and also kind of um, manage more higher level community issues that happen within the dorms. Um, and lastly, I'll talk a little bit about roommates. So it's often a big question, who are you going to live with in your dorm? There's a couple different ways you can choose roommates. So we have a roommate search that's available on Spire. Um, it's your student hub, and that's where students can select different housing preferences, such as if you like to go to bed earlier at night, if you like your room clean or messy, so on and so forth. And UMass will send you a list of people who might have similar answers. And from there, you can reach out to those students. Um, and then uh, also during your new student orientation, which happens over the summer, that's where a lot of people meet their roommate. So you can meet a roommate that way and mutually request uh, someone else. And then another way is through the UMass Facebook page. So a lot of the times people will mutually request people that way. You might meet somebody of a similar major, similar background, um, and be interested in living with them, and you can mutually request them that way. Um, and then you can also go random. I know a lot of students on my floor um, that I was an RA and went random, and it ended up being a really great experience. So definitely know no shame in going random at all. Sometimes I even recommend it because I would say, um, you know, going in just kind of like meeting somebody new on a clean slate, that can be that can be kind of nice. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about uh, residential life. I'll pass it off to Jen to talk about classes. Awesome. Thank you, Zoe. Um, so next on our day in the life tour, we'll be going to class. Um, so just a little bit about classes. Excuse me. Um, classes run all day. So You'll, uh, your student will learn if they're a morning, afternoon person, um, if they like to take them all at once and kind of block them together or kind of spread them out and have breaks during the day. Um, I tend to usually like to clump mine all together, um, but then have a nice lunch break in between. So I'll do like, if I have four classes, for example, I'll do two classes in the morning and then two classes in the afternoon, um, just to kind of have a little bit of a break in between, um, but totally up to you. That is part of the beauty of now going to college from high school, um, is you have a little bit more control over your schedule and your class times, which is awesome. Um, so a little bit about kind of freshman year. So your freshman year schedule, um, the classes are actually designed the classrooms are designed to be within a 15 minute walk from one classroom to the other. Um, UMass is a large campus, we understand that. Uh, so they like to kind of situate us to have time to get to our classes in between those 15 minute transfer times. 
Um, so my freshman year, I was enrolled in about four or five different classes. Um, I also am in the Honors College, and I started in the Honors College my freshman year. Um, so I had a mix of classes. They ranged anywhere from 20 people all the way to 200 people um, in some of those larger lecture classes. Um, this kind of gives you a little bit of freedom, though. Um, you're able to weed out classes you do like and don't like, um, and you're pretty much going to be taking a mix of general education classes as well as some major-based courses. Um, so you're kind of able to see a lot of what UMass has to offer your freshman year because you are going to be involved in um, some different types of classes. So a little bit more about academics. Um, so there are some classes that have hands-on learning. Um, a lot of my experience with those classes would have been in the Honors College because all of those classes are actually capped at 25 students. Um, so it is a little bit more discussion-based, a little bit more hands-on, um, a little more personal than a 200-person class. Um, some of them are experiential learning. Some of them are in research. Um, now, as an upperclassman, I've been involved in research. You still can do it when you're a freshman if you want to get involved in research. Um, however, my experience has been a little bit later later on. Um, so you could do experiential learning, research, um, and a little bit about those larger lecture classes. So sometimes they feel a little bit overwhelming, a little bit daunting um, to go sit in a 200 person lecture as a freshman when you're used to classes of 30 students. Um, so a few ways they like to make them feel a little bit smaller is um, having TA in office hours um, for professors and TAs. So this is where professors simply at least once a week will sit, have their door open for students to come in, ask questions, get to know them. Um, my professor, specifically my freshman year, um, he actually, it was a chemistry class and it was a class of around 300 people. And he made it a point to have his office hours actually at uh, coffee shops on campus. So it was really nice to kind of make it a little bit more casual. Um, and also occasionally he would offer to buy coffee for people. So that was really nice um, incentive to go and meet him, get a, a more of an established relationship with a professor in a larger class, which was really nice. And I mean, showed that he cared about this large class as well. Um, we also do have research opportunities, like I said a little bit earlier. So uh, my personal experience with research has been through my honors thesis. So I studied pregnant, uh, pregnant women with substance use disorders and their interactions with healthcare workers and the stigma that surrounds that care. Um, so my personal day in life might have been meeting up with my advisor for that um, for classes. But again, research is open to anybody, regardless of your major and regardless of how old you are. So you can um, start research as soon as you step foot on campus, which is really awesome experience. And I believe we'll touch on a little bit later again. But if anyone has any questions about research, um, feel free to pop a question in the chat and we'll get to those in a second. But that's a little bit of what, what I have for academics. Um, and we have this video that kind of showed all of the Eisenberg Business Hub. Um, so that's specifically if you are a business student. Um, but yeah, now we're going to go, we're getting a little hungry. So we're going to head off to lunch. So I'm going to pass that off to Julia. Thank you, Jen. We're going to the favorite stop, which is you're stopping for lunch. You're really hungry. You had a big day and you're ready to get some food. So we're going to head um, to a few different places on campus. We have about four dining halls on campus. Um, these dining halls or dining commons are spread all throughout campus, usually around the residential areas. So probably where you're going to be living. And then also we're going to have retail dining locations too. So I'll talk about the difference between those in a little bit, but just a little bit more about general dining here at UMass. So we are number one ranked by the Princeton Review for seven years in a row. We hold that very near and dear to our hearts. We love UMass Dining. And for a freshman year, you're going to have a meal plan usually called Unlimited 250. You can um, upgrade or downgrade from that, but that's usually the standard plan. This um, plan, the unlimited, refers to your unlimited access to the dining halls. That means you can go as long as you want. You can go as many times a day as you'd like to, whatever you would want. Then the 250 part of that plan refers to your dining dollars or your real retail dining dollars. So that is going to be 250 dining dollars every semester, your first semester and your second semester. And these can be used at places like Blue Wall. Blue Wall is almost like a really glorified food court here um, at UMass. And it's usually um, where a lot of like students are going to hang out, study, go get food. So Blue Wall is a great spot to go and use your dining dollars, maybe get a sushi roll or get a falafel wrap, whatever you're feeling that day. And it's in the center of campus. So it's nice to have that um, easy access. Maybe if you have a class around that area. Also located right across from Blue Wall is gonna be Harvest. Harvest Dining is basically like a really great 
convenience store. They have a hot bar, a pizza bar, um, a salad bar, um, a bunch of fruit and like other salads. And I absolutely love Harvest, something to grab on the go and just another food option here at UMass. You will never go hungry here. Our dining commons are going to be open as early as um, 7 a.m. And then Two of the four dining hall halls are open till midnight. That's going to be called late night dining. So it's really fun when they're going to have a special late night dining. My freshman year, they had cannoli night or like quesadilla night. You would grab a few of your friends. You would go to the late night dining and just kind of a great way to meet new friends and also get some good food before you're going to head to bed. Then we're not going to be number one dining just because of how good the food is. It is very good, but it's also because of the dietary restrictions and dietary accommodations that UMass will make room for. So we have halal, kosher, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, gluten-free, dairy-free, all you can think of. Um, UMass has got you covered. There are going to be separate areas in the kitchen and um on display areas for all of these different um, dietary restrictions. And then also if you have very severe allergies, you can always work directly with the UMass chefs and they'll make sure that you're gonna have food anywhere you go and they'll actually have a specialized meal plan just for you. And um, a little, if you have any other questions about dining, um, I do just like to say that it is like an experience to eat for UMass Dining. We have a lot of fun um, holidays throughout the year and events. So Lunar New Year actually just passed and they flew in specialty ch chefs from China. And um, that was absolutely amazing. I went to go get the Lunar New Year food and it's always delicious. And then Halloween is also a favorite um, here at UMass because we, Every single student gets a steak and lobster dinner. Um, I had my last steak and lobster dinner this past fall. It was absolutely delightful. It's always a madhouse at the dining hall on um, Halloween specifically, but it's very fun to kind of be in that UMass culture and also have your surf and turf um, dinner. So I'll pass it off to Zoe to talk about studying on campus. Awesome, yeah, so um, we just got some food. We're all fueled up, ready to get started with our studying. And so today we're going to be looking at South College. South College is an academic building on campus and also a fantastic place to study. Um, it's located right next to the library, so right near the heart of campus, very easy to get to. One of my personal favorite things about South College is the outlets. I know that sounds like a very, um, you know, like weird thing to say, but every single chair is kind of like near an outlet so you know if your computer dies stuff like that you can always be um you know plugging it in you're always connected to uh you know chargers there um so in addition to south college there's a lot of other uh, cool places to study or to go for academic help on campus um one really big place is the library um uh, by really big i mean really tall our library has 26 floors so it's the tallest red brick academic library in the entire world um in addition to some quiet floors that are in the library which are just completely silent spaces for students to focus and study we also have some more group centered floors where uh, people can talk a little bit so if you're studying for an exam you can actually reserve group study rooms so they have a little whiteboard a couple of chairs and a table for students to use if you're making a big project or preparing for an exam and then in addition to places to study in the library there's also different services so our tutoring services are in the learning resource center and that's located on the 11th floor of the library. It's one of my favorite resources on campus because they actually offer tutoring in a ton of different classes taught at UMass, specifically classes that are taken by freshmen and sophomore students. So when you're getting acclimated to those college uh, level classes, but they do have tutoring um, for classes even into your junior and senior year, you can do one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So you'll be one-on-one -on -one with a um, student tutor, or you can also do group tutoring or SI assessment sessions, supplemental instruction sessions. And this is also a really great example of our many on-campus jobs we have. You could be a tutor at the library. Um, we also have our writing center there. And so that's where students can get any feedback on their writing. So you can go in with any essay, short story, paper, and the writing center uh, student workers will take a look at it for you, help, you know, spell check, help you even start an essay if you haven't started it give you good ideas on how to maybe move some things around to make it the best that it could be for any class. Um, and so students like to go everywhere to study. Um, my personal favorite place to study, um, I would say, 
I, I kind of, I, I like to study everywhere. I, I don't like to stay in the same place once. I like to see a place, study there, go to another place. There's some really cool places to study in the design building um, that are really cool. The student union is one of my favorite places as well. Um, and also in every single place to study, there's always a place to get some food. There's always a place to grab some coffee. So like in the student union, you can go to Earth Foods Cafe. They have really good vegan and vegetarian food. There's People's Market. They do coffee, bagels, that kind of stuff. So a lot of different places for students to kind of find their little home find their little place that they like to study. Um, yeah, and so that's a little bit about, um, you know, different study spots on campus. And so now we'll head to our kind of like outside of the classroom stuff after we get our studying in. Great. So there's um, so much to do during your free time here at UMass. So just some things to highlight. Um, and our student personally, or us, will be we will be going to the rec center today for our free time on campus. Um, so the rec center, has pretty much anything you can think of in a gym. So they have weight rooms, they have indoor tracks, they have badminton, volleyball, basketball courts. And um, we have group fitness classes, which are really awesome. And they're actually taught by UMass students. I'm actually going to one later today. I'm going to yoga, um, which is always I like to do in the beginning of the week to kind of set the week off right. Um, and then also we do have a courtside cafe, which serves protein shakes, smoothie bowls, acai bowls, um, really anything you could ask for. Um, and then we also do have clubs. So to mention a little bit about clubs is we do have over 330 RSOs, which are student organizations. Um, we have religious, cultural, political, athletic, academic, um, special interests. So really anything that you could be interested in, we have a club here for. Um, some of my involvement are more so in some nursing um, kind of club. So I'm the president of our SNA, which is a student nurse association. I also am a student nurse ambassador. I kind of mentioned earlier, I do ski and board club and things like that. So those are just some of the ones that I'm personally involved with, but there's a ton of options for you. Um, Greek life, we do have about eight to 10% of Greek life um, or eight to 10% of students are involved in it. There's a ton of different types of Greek life, however. So we have Panhellenic, Interfraternity Council, Divine Nine, Multicultural Greek Council, music and service-based Greek life as well. Um, so we do like to call them small but mighty. My two cents always on that is it's definitely not necessary to join, but there if you want that as an option. Um, to talk a little bit about internships as well. So we do have an app called Handshake. So this is actually an online database of internships, job opportunities, co-ops. Um, this is actually designed specifically for UMass students. I'm always getting emails from them. Um, and I think a fun fact actually is that there are more opportunities uh, for internships, jobs, all this stuff, than there are students at UMass. So technically everybody could get an opportunity through Handshake, which is really cool. Um, and then also some personal experience. So I personally have an internship right now that is set up through the College of Nursing. So I am in the emergency department at Cooley Dickinson, which is a hospital right next to us. So that has been a really awesome experience that UMass has provided for me through um, not only the major itself and the school itself, but through kind of our internship department and stuff like that. As far as having a job on campus as well, um, this is where I am right now. This is my on-campus job. Um, so being a tour guide is, we're a little biased, but it is the best job on campus. Um, but you can get a job anywhere. So you can work in the dining hall, you can work in the library, uh, you could be a tutor, which is very popular, work at the campus store, be a bus driver, work at the rec center, Mullen Center. Um, so there is a student job board that highlights all of these available opportunities. You can kind of scroll through, um, also through word of mouth or even going to any of our like different kind of fairs and like community resource fairs, as well as um, kind of just, again, like I said, through hearing it through other people that you happen to meet, which is actually how I found out about tour guiding. So, um, but anyways, then also we do have student run businesses. So if anyone is interested in entrepreneurship or seeing how businesses work from start to finish, um, we do have seven of them here, which actually is the most in the country. Um, and my personal favorite, it has to be People's Market. They arguably have the best bagels and chai on campus. Um, so that is where I frequent, <laughs> but that's just a little bit about what there is to do in your free time. Um, the area is also lovely, has a lot of outdoor activities, um, which is kind of fun to get out and get some fresh air too. So I'm going to pass it off to Julia to talk a little bit about the library and some of our resources. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the library and other resources on campus. Coming to a big school allows you to have a lot of resources on hand from UMass, which is really nice here as a student because I've used a lot of them. 
Um, but I'm first going to talk about the library a little bit. Zoe already mentioned the Writing Center a little bit. So if you need help um, with writing your papers, the Writing Center is in the library and they can really help to make sure that your writing is up to the college level. We also have the Tutoring Center, or we like to call the LRC or the Learning Resource Center. We have the Tutoring Center in the library. When I was a freshman, I came in and thought I was a lot better at math than I actually was. So I started my math class and it was actually really challenging for me. So I headed to the LRC. You can do group tutoring, one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring, um, like walk-in tutoring. I made, I made an appointment and um, really met with a student tutor who had taken that class, excelled in it and gotten like a personal recommendation from the professor to be able to tutor it. And um, it was a great experience. It actually is the reason I passed that class. So thank you to the LRC and it's definitely useful to a lot of students on campus. We also do have the hours office. Um, I know Jen talked a little bit about research or earlier, but the hours office stands for the Office of Undergraduate Research and Studies. And this is an office that basically helps students find research opportunities on campus. So this is actually how I found my research opportunity. I didn't really know what I wanted to get into or what labs were open. So I went to the hours office and they put me in touch with a lot of different labs and also helped me um, refine my resume and make sure that I'm sending the right emails and, make, and including the correct information. So they helped a lot with me securing my research position, which ended up securing me a job in the long run as well. We also do have a lot of resources and outreach to support you as a person here at UMass. Um, being in a really large school, these can help you find your community here at UMass and really um, make sure you're getting the support that you need. All of our um, cultural centers are run by CMAS or the Center for Multi Multicultural Advancement and Student Success. Um, CMAS is usually a center for first generation multiracial low income or POC, and we actually have four cultural centers that they oversee, um, which are relating to um, personal identity. We also do offer that academic support that I was talking about earlier um, through a lot of our tutoring centers and CMAS also helps with that as well. We also do have the Stonewall Center, which is for the LGBTQIA plus population. And they're really there to create a safe space and also allow for um, bonding um, within the center as well. We also do have religious services on campus. We have the Newman Center, which actually just got rebuilt. It's absolutely beautiful. We also do have the Hillel House for our um, Jewish community. And you can always attend um, services in the area and also on campus if you're interested in that. We definitely have a lot of other services for um, identity and also um, physical health and mental well-being as well. So we have um, disability services, which will provide academic support for any sort of disability, and they'll allow for longer test taking times or um, note taking assistance, anything of that sort. And then we also have CCPH or the Center for Counseling and um, Psychological Health, and they'll help with individual therapy and group session workshops. And they'll also um, allow you to end up like referring you out um, to a different therapist or any sort of occupational therapy, and they'll really help um, walk you through that. So it's great to have that on campus and also make sure that these um, are available to you as a student and that you're not going to have to do this all on your own when you come to college. And um, to talk about getting off campus a little bit, I'll um, pass it to Zoe. All right, yeah, so now um, for dinner, we're headed to downtown Amherst. Let's take a look at some of the kind of things that we can do off campus. I know that's usually a pretty big question um, when you're deciding on maybe like what school to go to, just what's the surrounding area like? What are the things to do when you're not on campus? Um, I will say there is a lot to do. Um, most uh, First and foremost, what we're going to do today, downtown Amherst has a lot. Um, not only are there a ton of restaurants, but there's also some cool shops to go to, and it's all very accessible. You can actually walk to our downtown area if you'd like. I used to walk there all the time my freshman year on a really nice day. And we you can also get there for free using our free bus system. It will bring you downtown and also bring you back. Um, our bus stops, you know, it probably comes every like 15 minutes to half an hour to downtown. So very accessible there. Some of my favorite places to go to downtown. Um, my personal favorite place is Antonio's Pizza. That is like our like late night pizza shop. I know that may sound kind of like um, you know, like the classic answer to say, but I think their pizza is great. You can trust me. I'm from New York. I know what good pizza is and their pizza is incredible. They're open all the time at all hours of the night. So whenever my friends and I are hungry late at night, that's definitely the space that we like to go. A place that I love and also that my parents love is Pasta y Basta. It's an Italian restaurant downtown. Um, so I've taken my parents there and that's like where we're going probably like for graduation and stuff because it's really good. And then also I'm a huge bubble tea fan. I love lime red, lime red tea house. We have 
have like four different bubble tea shops downtown, but Lime Red is definitely my favorite. Um, they have really good mango tea. So that's um, enough about that. that. Those are my favorite places downtown. Um, but then also besides our just our downtown area, we also have a lot of cool stuff to do just in the surrounding area. As you can see here on those two pictures on the right, that's just a little bit of how beautiful the nature is in the Pioneer Valley. I had never been to this area of Massachusetts before I came to UMass, like before I toured the school. And I was absolutely blown away. When you're driving, you might see a bunch of farms and stuff. What you also see is incredible mountains, trees. We have a ton of great hiking trails. Um, different places to go, um, rock climbing. There's even a place to go zip lining that I went um, not too far from here, about a half hour away. So a lot of really cool nature stuff to do if you are into that kind of nature stuff. And then also our Northampton area is our kind of larger college town area. So that is um, more like a little city. Um, and so they have a ton of other restaurants and shops, um, a tattoo place, a piercing place that's pretty popular like among students. And then um, that's also available through our free bus system. And um, they also will have some different festivals and kind of larger events throughout the year, different parades and stuff that students will take part in. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, we do have our free bus system. That's our PVTA, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority bus system that students can take. And then we also have our campus shuttle that'll bring students around our campus. So it'll make a big loop around campus going all the way from Southwest all the way to Northeast. And then um, we are primarily a walking campus, but you'll see students biking, you'll see students skateboarding. I've seen roller skating. I see electric scooters. I see it all. And then we also have our Peter Pan bus system. Um, so that is where students can take a bus kind of up and down the East Coast to different places like New York City, Boston, even Washington, D.C., um, you know, Philadelphia, stuff like that. So that is um, the only bus that's not free for students. However, you can get buses really cheap. Um, I went to Boston um, a couple months ago for like 30 bucks round trip. So not too bad at all. Uh, but yeah, that is it for our kind of evening in downtown um and i will pass it back to jen yep so now for uh the rest of the night we're doing our evening activity um so you can go to sports games see guest speakers um there's always something going on at night on campus um so tonight our student is headed to the student union um so in the student union you can find a bunch of different activities those range all the way from black box movie theater to um, where movies are played. You also have performances that go on there. Um, we have UMass Got Talent in the student union, um, which is really fun. It's like a whole talent show. And then also this is the hub for all student organizations. There's a, so there's always different things happening there. Um, lots of times for different meetings to go on and different events. Um, I've been to a few concerts there as well as like pop-up boutique show uh, boutiques in the student union. Um, and then also we do have other activities outside of the student union. So we have hockey games, basketball games, and we also have improv, acapella, and comedy sh club shows. Um, again, we have more guest speakers, band performances. We also do host a lot of concerts in the Mullen Center. Um, so some of the more na uh, notable names that we've had recently were Cardi B. We had Jack Harlow last year for a spring concert, um, Trippy Red recently as well. Um, and then we also have had some stand-up comedians. So we had Kevin Hart and uh, Trevor Noah here as well. So a lot of stuff to do um, at night, which is always nice um, to get out of your dorm. So this is also just kind of a 360 of our student union. Um, so it was recently renovated, which is really nice as well. Um, it provides a really great space for not only student activities, but also studying as well, um, a great place to study. Um, so now we're just gonna talk a little bit about some questions. Um, after we're done with our little virtual 360. Well, and I am happy to actually ask some questions. Uh, Rachel is back up here. Um, I, I have to like also plug in as a UMass alum, there is still lots of great things going on. I had an amazing time. Uh, the frozen Fenway hockey game where UMass took on Boston College. We didn't win, but I got to tell you, when it comes to the audience in the stands, we totally annihilated. Uh, so it was a, a fantastic time. Thank you all so much for talking about what day in the life of what it is to be a student. I'd love to turn the camera back on to you and ask some specific questions. Um, my first one is, you know, tell me about something that was unexpected. Right. You did a lot of your research. You looked at everything. You had an idea of what you uh, anticipated from UMass Amherst. But what was something that you found out that you hadn't expected to find? Jen, do you mind starting us off? 
Yeah. Um, so I actually came from a school that was pretty um, close locally here. So again, I'm about 50 minutes away from campus. So something that I was kind of curious about and was also a little bit more concerned is would it be similar to high school? Would I see all of the people from my high school at UMass as well? Um, and I think I actually was a little bit more surprised just how many students are here and how able you are to integrate into whatever community you want for yourself here. Um, and while I actually do see some of my high school friends, which is also very very nice. Um, I am able to like kind of branch out and make other friends from different places, um, from different backgrounds, from different states, different countries, everything like that. So I think I was really pleasantly surprised um, how many communities are present at UMass and how many that you can get involved with and how easy it is to kind of get involved with things that mean a lot to you and matter a lot to you. And then you kind of find friends along the way through that. Um, so that was something that was really, I really appreciate about UMass that I don't know if I necessarily expected or I was a little bit nervous about. Great to hear. Julia, your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Kind of going off, Jen, a little bit, I was really shocked to see the sheer amount of clubs here at UMass. I know we always say like over 300, but you don't really fathom that number until you actually come to UMass. Because once you have the activities expo and all the clubs are kind of right in front of you, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many things I can do. And it almost does seem like overwhelming, but just know that you don't have to get involved right when you come here as a freshman. You can take your time to kind of ask other people what they're involved in and also just do it at your own pace, which I think is a, the really awesome part about um, becoming kind of more of an adult in college is you kind of get to take things at your own pace. And also that if you do join any of these clubs or any of these jobs um, here on campus, it's not, I kind of thought it was just like, oh, your people in your club or the people that you work with. But I mean, being especially a tour guide here at UMass, like where I'm extremely close with all of the tour guides here, I'm gonna hang out with them outside of work all the time. So it's super awesome to see that not just that you're doing clubs with people or that these are your coworkers, it's that they're also a part of your outside life and that um, you meet a lot of people in different areas as well. No, I couldn't agree more. Zoe, please join us. Yeah, I think um, I definitely agree with what everybody's been saying. And also um, just, I, I was definitely, uh, just something I didn't really think about, I guess, going into school was that you kind of, when you're in high school, you're in this little bubble of just like people who are from your high school, from your town, maybe from like a similar demographic as you. And I found something really just surprising and maybe not that surprising because it is a big school is just the amount of um, different types of students we have, students coming from, especially students coming from different places. I've met students from all across the world, um, coming from different countries, different states. Um, I actually have, um, when I was an RA, I was actually on an international floor. So I got to meet a lot of international students that way, and also a lot of different international RAs as well. And I think that it's a really enriching experience and something that you might not think about as much when you're in high school, because you're probably looking at the academics and the extracurriculars and the different programs. But, um, you know, UMass, like we went over the statistics in the beginning, we represent um, nearly every state in the United States. Um, we have a ton of different types of students that go here. And it definitely has kind of um, just made my college experience a lot better getting to meet different people kind of outside of my normal bubble that I might associate with. Absolutely. Mary, welcome back. Thank you for doing all that work behind the scenes. Uh, can you tell us something unexpected? You know, something you, you weren't looking for that surprised you about UMass Amherst? Yeah, for sure. Similar to Jen, um, in the sense that coming to UMass, one of my biggest fears is like, oh, I'm going to see a lot of people from high school and I really want to branch out. I love my town. I love where I'm from, but I also want to gather all these new experiences. And then coming to UMass, it's been an awesome um, experience for me because I feel like it is so doable by inserting yourself into a bunch of clubs. You can make this school of 23,000 undergrad, like you said at the beginning of the meeting, feel really small. And one of my favorite parts of campus is walking through campus every day and like seeing someone I know, whether that's from a class or a club or work, and then also always seeing a new face. It's really refreshing because it doesn't feel too small where you feel like you're running out of people to talk to or you've like exhausted all your resources. There's always something more to get involved in if you want. Um, but at the same time, I'm so content with all the opportunities that have presented themselves at UMass. And I really like how one opportunity leads to another, like through my job as a tour guide, I was able to talk to some really, really cool students who have done wicked inspiring things with their academic career. And that's kind of motivated me to expand 
what I think I might be interested in. And due to that, I've been able to join clubs and add different components of my education that I wouldn't have known unless I interacted with such a diverse student body that I think UMass does a really great job of like cultivating. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, and, you know, we, we talk about learning and, and so forth, but Jen, is there anything that you learned about yourself as being a student here at UMass? Um, I think I learned that I'm better at time management than I think. <laughs> um, so I think coming from, again, like high school into um, an environment where you have a little bit more control over your schedule, at first it kind of can go a little bit, uh, a little bit wonky because you're not really used to having all of like um, your like wants necessarily, I would say, or like your ideal schedule considered since, I mean, you would go to high school, you'd wake up at 7 a.m., go to class all day, go to sports, come home, do homework. Um, so it was definitely kind of a full structured day that was actually structured for you. Um, so I think coming to UMass, something that I learned was definitely how to manage my own time. Um, seeing as I was in control of my own schedule, um, I could pick my class times that I wanted. Um, I could join the clubs I wanted to do um, and all that kind of stuff. And then I also had to, of course, balance work on top of that. Um, so I think something that I did learn was, again, just how to kind of make sure I'm fitting in all of the stuff that I want to do that I need to accomplish. And then also learning to schedule time for self-care um, and scheduling time to hang out with friends and do things that I enjoy as hobbies as well so that's probably something I learned about myself is I'm better at it than I think I am <laughs> um, so that's always an uplifting thing to hear um, and to also have gone through in that experience as the mother of an adolescent you give me hope so thank you for that <laughs> Julia anything you learned about yourself yeah sure um probably that I am actually pretty comfortable public speaking in high school I um was, was like okay like yeah, I was like, okay, like, I guess I'll, like, do a presentation, but, like, I guess I didn't realize that um, you can actually, like, use that for a job, and, like, it really does help you, like, kind of push through, so that was something I definitely learned about myself. I think you just realize your strengths and your weaknesses when you're in college, and you start to, even if you have those weak weaknesses, like, you play on them, and you, like, understand why you're, um, that's your weakness, and same thing as your strengths, too, so I think it shows you the difference in all the students that you in class with that you're interacting with a daily basis you're all going to have different strengths different weaknesses and that's obviously what's going to help you um like get a job and then also what's going to help you stand out from other people as well fantastic thank you zoe anything you learned yeah i mean i learned a ton here and i continue to learn a ton um, academically, but personally, I think something I've learned is that I have a lot more interest than I thought I did. When you come to UMass, you're going to learn about different clubs or activities or sports that you might have never even heard of in your entire life. Um, one of them for me was marching band. I know that I am like the token marching band pe person amongst the tour guides, but I had actually never intended on join marching, joining marching band at all when I came to UMass. And I was convinced by my new student orientation leader who was in the marching band herself. She found out I played an instrument and promptly persuaded me to join marching band. And I've never looked back after four years of being a part of that organization and joining other ensembles from that and also getting involved in other ways on campus, you know, such as being an RA was not something that I necessarily thought about until I came here and I made a connection with my RA and thought that that was something that I would be you know, a little bit more interested in, um, and then everything, you know, all my involvement, um, you got kind of like learned once I got here. And so I think that's a big thing too, whether you might, you might be saying in your head, you know, all the tour guides here, we all have our little uh, clubs or hobbies and stuff like that. How am I going to find what I like? Maybe you don't have something quite yet that's piqued your interest. Don't worry about it because something you will also learn is that you do have stuff you're passionate about. You do have stuff that you want to do and want to get involved in, and you will definitely find that here. Oh, thank you so much. And by the way, marching band is never a token position. It is highly esteemed at UMass Amherst. So thank you so much for everything that you do and contribute. Mary, something that you've learned about yourself. Speaking of the marching band, if any of the freshmen live in Southwest next year, you'll hear them like bright and early on like a Saturday morning preparing for a football game. And I'll just let you know, it's the most unnerving, but also so it's like Christmas morning. It's so exciting, like hearing them like come through the residential area it's really really cool and I just think something I've learned about myself at UMass is like my ability to appreciate all different types of people I feel like there are people from like I'm so musically uninclined it hurts like 
I actually can't sing for the life of me or recognize anything but like I've come across so many people with so many different interests and like being exposed to that and seeing how I can learn from them but also like learn so much about myself it's like being a student at UMass allows you to grow individually by being around people who are also growing individually but at the same time you're kind of all growing together which I really like. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. And I just, I, I know our audience can't applaud you. So I will thank you so much to all of our student tour guides, both on camera and off camera for helping to make this possible on a Sunday afternoon where you could be doing other things, relaxing, doing homework, so many options. Uh, but we really appreciate your insight because there's nothing that can compare to that as our students and their families consider their options when it comes to where to enroll in the fall. So thank you all of you.